So starting with the Zabbix 7.0, there's this small great thing about the shuttle reports. Right now you can also successfully send multi-page dashboards to your recipients, to your emails, where you want to send those reports. So I think it's a good time to make another tutorial like how you can configure all of that from the scratch on your Zabbix installation. And in my example, I have Oracle Linux 8, and I will say straight up that I've upgraded my uh, Zabbix version 6.4 to the 7.0 better release something, whatever right now is the latest. And uh, there is a small issue that you need to separately upgrade the PHP 8, which is the minimal required PHP version for the Zabbix, but that's not a big deal. And uh, what else? So let's take a look. Uh, basically, RPM minus QA grep uh, grep Zabbix. We can see what I have on my system. Everything basically is the version 7.0 beta 1. Here we have my front end. Um, nothing here, just some certificate monitoring from the previous versions. And our task is to configure shuttle reports, right? It is a native functionality, but it does require to install some components on your system and of course also configure them. And uh, for you to be easier to follow along and copy all the commands we're going to use this guide which is uh, from the initmax who is also official partner of the zabbix and basically it's mostly going to be just copy pasting so first of all you need to install the reporting service itself which is official component of the zabbix it's nothing like third party it is published by the Zabbix, maintained by the Zabbix. So if there will be some some bugs or whatever problems, it's also going to be handled by the Zabbix itself. To do that, just copy paste in your CLI. And I already have it installed. So it's going to show me that right after right now. So nothing to do. It is already installed. After we install it, we need to, you need to add a new repository because Reporting service requ requires to have Google Chrome on your um, Linux machine where the reporting service is installed. Chromium also works, but uh, the default way how people usually do that and also in this guide we use Google Chrome. So open directory etc yum repos d and add a new repository for the Google Chrome filled with this information. This is basically what I already have also done on my system. So if I would vi to Etsy yum repos d google chrome dot repo, you can see exactly same information as you can find in uh, in a documentation page. So that's good. And uh, now we can proceed to the actual installation of the Google Chrome browser, which just requires to type DNF install and agree to installation Google Chrome stable. Um, again, copy paste. In my example, everything is already pre-installed. Before clicking record, I've tried to configure everything myself. So for you, it's going to take a couple of seconds or minutes to get it up and running. Then probably the most important step, you need to edit the Zabbix server configuration file. And to do that, of course, we go to the Etsy Zabbix, Zabbix underscore server dot conf, and we need to change two parameters. First of all, start report writers, and we can search for that start report writers. There we have, I already have started one, and by default it's zero, but basically it just starts a pre fork process of the Zabbix that will be responsible to send your scheduled reports that you're going to configure in the front end. And a second thing that we need to do is specify the URL, this web service URL, where we actually installed this web service. So where we did run this command, Zabbix web service install. Uh, in my case, it's localhost. So the setting is straightforward. It's localhost. And the default port, port is 10053. And, and we use the link slash uh, report. It's also possible to install uh, reporting service on external machines like we could have a Zabbix server in front and sitting on this virtual machine and the reporting server somewhere else but then of course accordingly you need to set this parameter as a web service uh, URL right and uh, yeah also might be necessary to change the allowed IP if you are um, not using the web service on the same machine so if that's some external and then basically after that is done we can restart the Zabbix server. Uh, not here. I will just quit without the saving. 
So here, uh, just to make sure that all our changes to the configuration file actually take effect and systemctl enable Zabbix web service service now. So basically, even after you will restart your virtual machine, the Zabbix web service will always be up and running. And then it's basically just a matter of uh, some small configuration in the front end. Uh, this is first of all, like administration general front end URL, administration general other and here you can find front end URL. It's uh, HTTP 192.168.56.101 slash Zabbix, just like I have my front end uh, URL. That is necessary for the web service to pass that to the Chrome. Without this, it's not gonna work, most likely. It didn't work in my case. Um, also make sure that the uh, schemas here matches the schema that you are using here. Otherwise, it also uh, may not work. Then basically, we can almost almost we can start configuring our first scheduled report. And to do that, we need to go to the reports section, then scheduled reports, it's empty because it's a clean installation, create the report and then fill in just a couple of fields like the name, uh, we'll call it testing, then you need to select which dashboards do you actually want to include in this report that you're going to send, I just for the sake of the testing will use the global view and uh, period. So what period do you actually want to select previous day, previous week, previous month, previous year, when you want to send these reports, so cycle, uh, start time, start date, end date, subject and message, how you want to look at it. I will show you a couple of tips and tricks a bit later. But th the most important thing, like we can test. And uh, in my case, it's probably going to almost work as much as I want to show it uh, working to use. So report generation test is successful and uh, sending failed. I will show you why. Uh, I will not fix this in my installation, but you will. First of all, make sure that all the recipients and even right now in the test, if I am sending it sort of to the admin, to the myself, make sure that the, those users you are mentioning here, actually have the media type configured for the media uh, type email, right? So that is necessary. Otherwise, your schedule reports are not going to work just because Zabbix doesn't know to which email you want to send um, schedule report. And I have a media type and it still failed sending to the subscribe at youtube.com despite the fact that Probably this email doesn't even exist. Maybe it does. I don't know. Uh, but in my case, the other problem is that I don't have a media type configured. So if we go to the alerts media types, we are using email, obviously, to send the shuttle report. And I have a Gmail, I have my email address, but uh, but I don't have uh, the correct password and notification is disabled for my Gmail. So um, yeah, media type email is not working in my case, make sure that you have functioning media type to actually send the emails from your Zabbix installation it has nothing to do with the shuttle reports themselves. And if you have a working Zabbix in place, who is sending some alerts about the triggers and stuff like that, then most likely this thing is already done. So when of when all of these steps are prepared, we can go back to the shuttle reports. And uh, yeah, about the tips and tricks like subjects and message. You can write in some text like this is a shuttled report generated by the Zabbix or something else. Or you can do it like uh, here. Uh, we can find uh, there we go. Like the following text is used in the subject. And as you can see, we're also using the macroses. And the following text is used as a body. Right. So this um, on the first look at look a bit crazy some time FMT time and, and percentage date month, uh, day month year and so on and so on. But basically, when you are receiving the email, it looks like this. Um, yeah, if you can see, I'll try to zoom in. Like uh, the subject is weekly demo report from 25 September to 01 October and a year 2023. So basically all of the macroses that we input in the subject and the message will actually reveal so that the recipient of the report will see the meaningful text of what this is, what kind of report this is and what's the period that's generated inside of it. 
that's basically it. That's how you can configure shuttle report in a Zambic 7.0. Uh, if you want to support this content, don't forget to click like, subscribe and leave some sort of comment, whatever that helps YouTube algorithm to show these uh, videos to more people and you will definitely deserve a big thank you from me. So thank you and goodbye.